Hello and welcome my friends to another video. In this video I'll be talking about sustainable construction materials. The construction industry is a huge contributor to waste and to greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. Now statistics in 2018 shows that the building and construction industry accounted for 36% of the final energy use and 39% of energy and process related carbon dioxide emissions. In 2017, 20.4 20 million tonnes of waste were generated from construction and demolition. Australia's construction sector is the fourth largest indirect emitter of greenhouse gas emissions, and it's mostly due to embodied carbon. Now, embodied carbon is the amount of carbon that goes into a building. So, for instance, your material types, for the various material types, you'll have a different value of embodied carbon embedded in the manufacturing process, in the extraction process, in the assembly process, in the transportation, etc. Steel and concrete are very widely utilised materials, as we all know. And they are carbon and energy intensive. So they're difficult to recycle, they contribute to the nation's growing waste problem, so we need to find alternatives. So to deal with this waste and greenhouse gas emission issue, in construction, what we can do is we can look for alternative construction materials that are more sustainable, um, specifically materials that are not as carbon intensive as steel and concrete that allow us to also recycle waste, maybe in some instance even minimise that to uh, zero waste. So when you're looking out for sustainable materials, you need to start from the ground up. So the material has to be recyclable and it has to be reusable. When you're thinking of the sustainable materials, it is desirable to base it on this concept of circular economy. What circular economy is, it's an economic system where waste is eliminated via the continual reuse of resources. So as soon as you, one specific process in the cycle finishes uh, the use of that material, it gets passed on to a different process that utilizes that material and so on and it continues to be reutilizing your material so you basically eliminate waste. In addition we need to start looking at the life cycle sustainability assessment of materials whereby the impacts of a material throughout its life cycle is assessed from a social, environmental and economical aspect. Now in the next part of the video, I'll be explaining some construction materials that are being introduced into our construction industry and they're being labelled as a sustainable alternative to your usual steel uh, and concrete materials. The first sustainable material that we'll be having a look at is recyclable plastic brick. This is uh, made from a rubber polymer that is composed of a mixture of sulphur and canola oil. This mixture forms this rubber powder that can be stretched and compressed without melting and this process is referred to as reactive compression moulding. Now this powder can be mixed with recycled plastic such as recycled PVC which is a common synthetic plastic polymer that is used in pipes, for instance, in construction. And along with uh, plant fiber or sand, heated and then can be shaped into your usual brick shape. And that's why uh, we refer to this material as a recyclable plastic brick. Another sustainable material that is being introduced into the market is recycled plastic product where instead of mixing it with this rubber polymer what we have is we get a machine that would ground the plastic uh, and then compress it and then it would size it into a concrete into the size of a concrete brick. Uh, the plastic itself doesn't need a binding agent in this process or an adhesive to stick together so the carbon footprint is uh, less compared 
to, say, for instance, concrete. Our third alternative sustainable material that we'll be having a look at in this video is smart wood. Now, smart wood is made from recycled timber chips. A water-based nanoglue is then used to combine the waste wood together. The material replicates the strength of a 100-year-old tree. So once it goes through this um, gluing process, you end up with a product that is very strong comparable to a 100-year tree strength. In addition, the smart wood can be uh, built or it can be manufactured so that it's termite, water and fire resistant, which is something that's desired in the construction industry. Green steel is another alternative construction material. Now, you can think of it as being used instead of your usual hot rolled steel. In terms of how it's created, it's created using hydrogen instead of metallurgical coal. And it reduces the amount of the iron ore that you need because of the use uh, of hydrogen. And thus, this is what cuts down on the greenhouse gas emissions. Now, hydrogen can also be renewably generated via a process referred to as electrolysis. And electrolysis involves passing an electric current through your water. And that's how you sort of split your water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, in terms of how this uh, process can be powered, you can use uh, natural resources such as wind and solar power. Straw bale is another sustainable material that is made from dried stalks and the leaves of dried cereal crops. It is a strong material that has excellent thermal insulation. It is also an excellent sound insulator and it's commonly used in the construction industry for such purposes. Grasscrete is an alternative to your concrete uh, pavement system. So it involves the use of reinforced cellular institute concrete wherein you can grow natural grass in voids within the concrete structure. So that sort of allows for the root system of the grass to interlock the concrete blocks together. It is an eco-friendly alternative to concrete outdoor surfaces and as such some of the advantages include the fact that it's permeable and hence does not erode. It enhances the greener urban design and thus it mitigates modern construction look and it also satisfies the basics requirements associated with water conservation and reutilization of rainwater. Now the basics, remember, is a building sustainability index that is developed over here in New South Wales, Australia. Rammed earth is another ancient way of constructing uh, buildings. So it's been used uh, by you know previous civilizations and the process of creating this rammed earth material is through compressing gravel sand silt and a small amount of clay into a formwork you can also add a small amount of cement or reuse reinforcement bars or bamboo for enhanced capacity of course talking about bamboo bamboo is another sustainable material that is used in construction. It is one of the most sustainably sourced plants in the world. It grows very quickly and can be harvested without killing the plant. This next material is a very innovative construction material um, and it's known as the mycelium brick. Now mycelium is made from thin root like fibers from fungi. It is super strong, uh, it's water and mold resistant, it is also fire resistant, and it can be grown into a specific form, thus reducing the processing requirements. It is also a natural termite resistant material. So the mycelium is added to the crop waste that is collected by farmers, it is then poured into molds 
and grown and dried into a sturdy construction material. The bricks, it usually takes roughly five days for them to grow and become usable. Now, remember, this is a product that is currently still under development, but it will provide a very sustainable avenue in the future. Ferroc is a sustainable alternative to concrete. You can mix steel dust with other waste from the steel production process, along with silica from ground glass, to end up with the material required to produce ferroc. Now the process absorbs carbon dioxide, so instead of emitting carbon dioxide, such as in cement production, in the process you're absorbing carbon dioxide. It is stronger and more flexible than concrete. It is also suitable for use in structures that are located in areas that are earthquake prone. Another alternative to concrete is hempcrete. Now hempcrete is a concrete-like material from the woody fibrous hemp plant. It is made through combining hemp aggregate with water and lime-based binders. The lime bounds the fibers together in the shape of a block and the hemp tree is considered a fast-growing tree, hence why this is a sustainable uh, construction material. The material itself is fire and termite resistant, and it also acts as a thermal insulator. We also have another concrete alternative, and that is timbercrete. Now, timbercrete is where you mix the sawdust uh, with uh, a bit of concrete. It's lighter and less carbon intensive than concrete. Uh, using timbercrete allows the sawdust from construction waste to be recycled and you can also get timbercrete bricks, pavers and cladding. It is termite resistant and it is also fire resistant. So apart from all of these sustainable alternative materials that I talked about, there are some other considerations that can be undertaken in order to enhance the sustainability of your construction activities. So some of the things that you can think of or you can think about implementing include the use of local raw materials and this by doing that you save on the energy that's expended for transportation. You can also replace a bit of the cement that you use in your concrete structures with supplementary cementitious materials. Another thing that can be done is you can design your building for deconstruction. So this is a process whereby you take apart the building or the structure elements and you can use them somewhere else once you're done with the utilization of the building. So I do hope that this video has provided some insight for you guys when it comes to the use of alternative sustainable materials. Do check out my other videos where I talk about other construction materials that are used in the building industry.